Welcome to Ready Driver One. Uh, this is a brand new channel. Um, just kind of wanted to introduce everybody to what's going to be going on and kind of the direction the channel's going. So my Volvo, we're going to be doing some interesting stuff to it. And I kind of wanted you guys to follow along. Uh, mainly I wanted to more focus on how you can do kind of your own stuff for a lot cheaper than you can just go buy stuff. And oftentimes it'll come out to a better result. My my whole design aspect with this Volvo is gonna be more of a cyberpunk sci-fi style. Um, I've seen a lot of really cool ideas out there, a lot of inspiration, but it's mostly just computer animated or, you know, hand-drawn. Um, and I kind of wanted to bring that more into real life. I've always liked the style and I always thought it was really neat. I just kind of want to go for something a little different and uh, I wanted to take you guys with me on the journey and if you feel inspired, cool. Um, that's kind of what I'm going for. I just want to show you that you can do whatever it is you want to do and you know at the end of the day if you can sit back and look at it and go that looks pretty freaking cool, that's all that matters. So that's kind of where the channel's gonna go. So thanks for checking out the channel, and stay tuned, there's going to be a lot more coming, and we're going to be doing some cool stuff. Alright, so I think we're going to get right into it. Um, today, I kind of just came out and sat and looked at the car for a little while, tried to come up with some ideas. It's tough doing sci-fi, because <clears throat> you need kind of like organic looking materials, which sometimes can be hard to come by but they can also show up in places you wouldn't expect so um, for an example I have this old fan that I got at like Goodwill for like a dollar or something it's one of those old stand-up oscillating fans and uh, so I took it apart this is the two pieces of it and I thought that was kind of a cool looking like grill thing then I found uh, another picture online, a drawing somebody did, and being that I'm doing the whole roof thing, like the electrical conduit and like boxes and stuff, I kind of set it up there and I'm kind of digging the way that looks. So I think the, the original idea is going to stay the same. I'm still going to make something behind here, probably use some flashing just because it's cheap, it's easy to bend and it can match this kind of curve of the roof and I'll I'll backfill this so that it's not like see-through to the roof so that'll like come out of that go through here be lit up come back out of here this one might run down the A pillar to something else down here and then this one can run over to this little like forward-looking setup that I've got going on. Um, so I think that's going to be a good start. That's kind of where I'm at. So the next step I think is going to be trying to mock up a little bit more and then I might come up with a list of stuff that I need and do like a Home Depot run. Grab some more conduit, some paint, uh, some brackets. Measurements done, um, got things kind of fitted up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab some more of this stuff, just half inch PVC, uh, some bends, some straight pieces that I can cut up. So we'll go check out Home Depot and we'll see what we can find. Okay, we're back. I got the flashing that I was talking about so we can make like a backdrop for this.
so we're making some progress. Uh, we got the main body of this thing all set. We got the end caps made. We got some holes drilled. I changed up how I'm going to mount it though. It's going to be more on top like that than I originally had it where it was down in the in the gutter. So we're going to finish that up. We're going to get everything finalized and finished and then painted. And then we'll start working on the inside. My battery died and I didn't realize it and I've been doing all this without filming. So let me catch you guys up real quick. I got pretty much everything accomplished that I wanted to. Uh, so now we're working on the the pipes that go on the inside. This is what I've done off camera. The cool part about it is going to be that. So I'm going to backlight this with the green LEDs. So that will be in this. So sort of like that. So I got one more to do and then I think I can start piecing this together. Alright guys, it's been a few days. I've been working on this thing off and on. Um, I think I was being a little ambitious with trying to get it done in one shot, but uh, it's a learning process. You never know what your next prop or your next piece is going to really entail. So, it's most of the way done. Um, I'll give you a little tour. I got pretty much everything done the way I wanted. Got it perforated. I got some vents put in there. I got it wrapped in actual copper wire, um, threw a light dust coat on it, and uh, I'm going to begin the aging process with the paint. So that's kind of where we're at. I think what's left to do, um, where is it? <laughs> I had it. It was just here. Yeah, this it's a mess. It's just been constant chaos in here. Uh... There it is. Okay, so I do have this old, like, 80s voltage gauge, which I thought might be kind of neat to put in here. Um, you know, obviously it'll be countersunk and it'll sit in there, but I think I'm going to stick that in there, and that way once all this is painted, I can wire this up to the same 12 volt the LEDs are going to have. They're going to light this up, and it'll be an accurate gauge, and it'll kind of, like... I'll give it a look like it's doing something. Um, the whole thing behind this was like voltage amplifier. Pretty much just wanted it to look like it's taking uh, DC 12 volt, which is vehicle voltage, and converting it into something more to power all this crap. So I think that might go in here, and then we can begin the process on painting the cover. Uh, I did pick up some other stuff. I found this cool, like, neon orange, uh, it's just rubber hose from Home Depot. It's pretty hard, but I think I might put some of that in there just to give it some color while it's sitting static and it's daytime and the LEDs won't be on. I think, like, kind of like a, a wrap or, like, having two come down and then cross over might look kind of neat. So we'll see where that goes. I'd like to finish this up today and mount it today. That's the other thing I'm still working on figuring out is how to mount it because I know I said before I don't really care about drilling into my car but the more I think about it like I've drilled into the fenders which is fine. Fenders are replaceable, hoods are replaceable, everything but the roof is kinda like once you put a hole in it there's a hole in it so my other thought was to use these little straps and drill them into the pinch rail and then bolt them to the side of this. So utilize the, the rain rail here and then have it be removable, I guess, if need be. Um, but we'll figure that out. For now, I just want to get this thing finished, painted, ready to go on, and then we can start laying out the rest of the stuff. All right, got the workplace cleaned up a bit. We're ready to start painting. I decided against using the gauge in here. It's just gonna be easier to put something different in there. So, uh, we're going to start with some 320, just to scuff it up. Okay, that ought to be 
be good. Now let's go ahead and just put a dust coat of just some black primer. So I changed my mind a little bit on the paint scheme. Uh, that's what's taking so long with this whole thing is I'm so indecisive. But So I got it masked off, I masked off the grill portion. So I'm gonna paint the rest of this body with the safety orange. So I didn't paint it heavily, I wanted to leave it kind of spotted looking, so it has that more worn look to it already, I don't have to do as much work to age it after the fact, um, but yeah, I think that's going to look really good, and then I'll probably use silver or white to do some stenciling, and then once the stenciling, the lettering, the other paint is all on, We'll go back and we'll age the whole thing together so it all makes sense. All the scratches go all the way through everything and it just looks worn in the right places. So we'll wait for this to dry. We'll start doing some stencil work. A few moments later. touch the smallest bit of anti-seize. <laughs> so, here's a little reveal. I think this looks awesome and it's going to age really well. You already can see like where if you put down stencil when the paint's still a little wet, it'll take it off in kind of a natural looking wear. Um, so all this chrome-ish silver stuff, we're going to age that a bit too. Same with back here. I masked off a lot of this to keep black because I just think it's going to look better once we get some rub and buff on it. And so that's the other side. So we're going to dull down a lot of this and put some more black like low lights in there. Um, but overall, I think that's looking pretty rad. So we're going to get to aging this and we'll see if we can make it look good. So a little trick I learned from doing this for a while is if you get to this before the paint's totally dry, it's still got a tackiness to it. You can actually take just some regular painter's tape, the blue stuff, and if you... So this is going to sit on the car this direction, so the wind will be moving this direction. So you always want to stay kind of in that mindset of directional so if you kind of rub this over it see it's taken some of the paint and that's naturally just over the years the direction like wind and sand and dirt will move and then down here where it's kind of soupy we can just take some sandpaper and that'll give you that battle-worn finish. All right, we are finally finished with this thing. It's been like two or three weeks now. Uh, <laughs> time management. So I went ahead and finished up a lot of stuff off camera just to get it done. Uh, yeah, it's looking awesome. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you how it looks. I got it mounted up. I decided on something a little different. I didn't want to drill holes in my roof, so I came up with a different mounting system. Here it is.
right, so here's the mounting system I came up with. I got these uh, steel brackets. They're like 90 degree. I found them just laying around, but I had four of them, so I figured I'll just mount them. So they hook in to the rain rail on front and back, and, uh, and then they just drill into the side. And since there's wood behind here, it's got a nice tight grip on it. And I mean, that thing's not going anywhere, so I should be able to still drive on the highway. And on the other side, I mounted it in between the sunroof and the roof, so it's all nice and flat. I also added this. It's a cruise control module that came with this car. It was never hooked up, and it was just in a box of parts, so I thought it had a cool look to it. I added a relay, and the wiring that came out of it, I just used some excess of that tube that we used in here, and just mount it to another little switch that it doesn't do anything but it kind of looks the part so i just had it floating around and it fit right in there so it's perfect uh let's see what else overall that kind of gives you a better look inside everything's distressed and kind of old looking which is what i was going for and we distressed all the paint on here which i kind of showed you guys a little bit I didn't show you any of the lettering or anything, but, um... So I'll go ahead and show you on this thing, since I haven't touched it yet, my method of distressing it a little bit using that rubbing buff. Basically, all you're gonna do is just take some of it and just put a little tiny, tiny dab on a towel. And, like, literally, that's probably too much. Um, and then just kind of work it in a little bit and then you're just gonna find your high points and that's pretty much it you can see the dramatic difference it made just in that short little messing about so now it's got that look to it where it kind of matches. Um, I'll probably go back in with some brown or something just to add a like wash of like rust effect. Um, then once all that's dry, I'm gonna pull this back off, hit it with some matte clear, and the matte clear will usually help it a lot. I hit this with the matte clear, and it really just gave it that look that it needed. So that's basically it. I mean. There's not a lot to it. That stuff is awesome. A little bit goes a long way. And you can get it at Hobby Lobby. So, again, it's just rub and buff. And this is the silver. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, I wanted to say just thanks for hanging in there with me. This is, like I said, video number one in the series. And there's going to be a lot more cool stuff to come. It's just my time trying to get out here, film this, edit it, do all the work. This stuff takes time, but um, yeah, it's going to be quite a transformation. I'd like you guys to hang in there with me while it kind of goes through that. Um, it's just something a little different. And So again, thanks for checking it out. Um, I'm always open to comments, suggestions, whatever. I will be getting around to doing some engine stuff at some point. Um, We've got the big turbo, the big intercooler to go on, so it won't be all just aesthetics, but I'd like to get it to that point before February 27th when Radwood is in Austin. I want to kind of unveil this down there. So go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, you know, tell your friends if you're into this kind of stuff, cool. Uh, I'd appreciate the share, I'm just trying to get this thing going and we'll see what the future holds, so thanks, bye.